remembered Noah in the ark. And that's when the waters started to recede. Because mm -hmm. the water was full of filth, full of dirt. You can't plant anything. You can't do anything with it. It's no good. Amen. 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 That's that's what I see. That's Amen. A, a parallel. That is a parallel to our lives. That's our spiritual right. life. What what dirt are we allowing to come into our spirit, come Amen. into our ears, to come into our heart? Places where God has set aside. That's right. Make for human and God interaction. That Kairos moment where we have that moment with God. But if anybody can't do anything with it because it's full of filth. And they refuse to be what? They refuse to be convicted. They they refuse to change their hearts. They refuse to allow the Holy Spirit to work in them, to clean them. Amen. Amen, Mom. And Mom, in, in conjunction with the with the filth, uh, and one point that you put out, which is outstanding, right? You said there's no rest, right? You said there was a constant movement, a constant chaos. Right, a chaos as we see, but the wicked are like the troubled sea, the sea being troubled, right? Troubled, continuous trouble, chaos, confusion when it cannot rest. Right, we look back in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, it says, The beast rose up out of where. The sea, right? And now I'm talking in a spiritual aspect, in a spiritual point, right? The beast rose out from where? The sea. And where's the wicked? Or what is the wicked like? Like the troubled sea when it cannot rest. Right. So my question to us is, where are we? We talked about last week about being escaped. We talked about last week as far as being the remnant. We talked about being escaped from the sea. Now we're going to talk about what is the sea? What's in the sea? And mommy, you put it perfectly. You said when it it it's the it cast up mire and dirt. What is that mire and dirt? That spiritual mire and dirt. Are we allowing that spiritual mire and dirt to fester within our spirits, within our hearts, within our minds? Are we living above the waters and of the seas? Are we allowing the spirit of the enemy to take over us when he comes in like a flood? Are we allowing the Holy Spirit to lift up a standard? Do we have the standard of the Holy Spirit to overcome the waters when they come to remain out of the sea? Because I'm telling you, the enemy is coming in like a flood. Oh, he is coming. And it's a continuous, continuous come. It's a continuous, continuous attack to God's people. The Bible says a little bit of leaven, leaven if the whole lump. Are we allowing just a little bit of leaven? What leaven? What are we talking about about leaven? Ah, right, let's go to Galatians chapter five.
Start at verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Verse 18. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are under the law. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, various variants, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And these are just a few of the things that we have to fight, that we have to stand against, that we have to run from. The Bible says, flee from fornication. Flee from idolatry. Flee from you for us. And walk after righteousness. We have to mortify the deeds of the body. And what do I mean by mortify? Mortify means to kill, deaden, deprive of power. And it starts with the mind. I know it's repetition. I know I said it last week, but we got to do it because I feel the, I feel the waters of the enemy, the waters of the iniquity of this world. But we got to be above it. We got to get above it. We cannot wallow in the waters of the iniquity of this world. It's too easy to do. It's too easy to fall into the seas. Let's go to Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one, verse one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters Let me read that again and the earth was out was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters all right Let's go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Let's read that again. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the death, delivered up dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works works. 
So my question is to everyone, why didn't why didn't the the, the scriptures say the sea and the earth? Can anyone answer that for me? Mom? Where it says that you just read, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to his work. So if you see read this, I understand that it looks like it's dual. You know what I'm saying? It's two. That first, the what? The sea gave up instead. People that have been lost at sea. People whose ship has sank. Let me just give you an example. The Titanic. Everybody knows that. That, that ship which they declare was unsinkable, did the unimaginable and sunk. So, And there were people that lost their lives for because of that. And then it says, and death and hell delivered up their dead. Meaning that not only did the sea give up or let's say spew out its dead, but so did the sea. It says, um and death and hell even death people that died whenever they died let's put it like that and those that were destined for hell meaning those that did not know the lord god that did not seek after the things of righteousness and they gave up their dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to his works Amen. You know, it's you will be judged. Whether you, you are in the sea, you will be resurrected up and you'll be able to you will stand before the, the Father, before the Son, before the Holy Spirit, and you will be judged according to the deeds that you've Amen. done in this body, according Amen. to the word of God. Amen. And then it also says, um, where you had uh, read and the dead which were in them, they gave up their people that died without price, you know, and they were judged. Every man will be judged. Amen. To his works. Amen. That is on the earth. Amen. 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 And let's turn to Revelations chapter 21. Verse one, all right, here we go. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And there was no more sea. And I do believe this is not just a natural, but also a spiritual aspect. A spiritual aspect in, as it relates to no more confusion, no more chaos, no more realm of the natural. Right? No more natural realm. No more realm of the natural and of the flesh, right? Because we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, right? First the natural and then the spiritual, right? There will be no more realm of the fleshly things, of the carnal ways during this period. But what is the Lord asking us to do now? Right? Because he stated it 
right? He prophesied it in Revelation chapter 12. We read it in verse 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 13, 14, right? Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them, right? The Lord desires us to dwell within the realm of the heavens. How do I dwell in the realm of the heavens? What do I have to do to dwell in the realm of the heavens? To be above the earthly seas, the rim of the sea, the rim of the carn carnal man, the rim of carnality, the rim of the flesh, the rim of the of sinful nature and, and iniquity. Because we don't have to be in the sea. It's here. But we don't have to be in it. We don't have to swim in it. The Lord desires us to be above the sea. He desires us to be in the heavenly realm. But it first starts with the mind. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He said in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, and be not conformed to this world, he said, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So first, we have to give our bodies to him, give our minds to him. And then he says, and be not conformed to this world. Mom always talked about the worldly spirit, the worldly spirit. This is what I'm talking about. The seas is the worldly spirit. The spirit of the world, the spirit of carnality, the spirit of the flesh, which we have to fight every day, daily, in order to be kept. We kept by the power of God through salvation, unto salvation, ready to be revealed when? And the last time. So we have to stand in the rim of the spirit. He said, walk in the spirit. We read that in Galatians chapter five. Walk in the spirit. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. If I'm in the rim of the flesh, I'm not going to walk in the spirit. I'm going to continually walk in carnality, in the realm of the waters, of the seas, of the iniquity, of the iniquity, of a worldly spirit, a carnal mind. And these are things that God despises. Romans chapter 8. For to be carnally minded is that, but to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. What did we read? We read that the wicked is like a what? A troubled water, a troubled sea that has what? No rest. It has no rest, but there's only peace when we walk continuously in the Holy Spirit. And I'm speaking to myself. Walking continuously in the spirit and not in the realm of the flesh. And this is basic. We know this. And what do I mean? Give an example. Someone does something to me. I'm hurt. Guess what? I'm going to be, I'm not going to talk to that person. I'm going to hold in, I'm going to hold a grudge. And I'm talking to myself.
Romans chapter 5, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation work in patience, patience experience, and experience hope, because what? The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. This is something that I have to pray every day. Lord, give me your love. Let your love be shed abroad in my heart because the only way I can draw or people can be drawn to Christ is by what? The love of Christ. And the love of Christ will what? Draw them. If they don't see the love of Jesus in me, how can they come to God? If I don't love my brother and my sister, how can other people say, oh, wow, that is wonderful. Look at them. And trust me, like we said last week, they are hungry and thirsting and want to see the love of God. They want and they're hungering for the manifestation of the sons of God. And guess what? That manifestation is going to be love. But I tell you, Satan is bringing everything in his power to try to tear us down, to try to tear God's people down, to ensure that we do. If we don't show the love of Christ to one another, oh, there's no body. If we don't show the love of Christ to one another, oh, you suppose he or she's supposed to be a son of God. It's that love. And Jesus, play, and he continuously, 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 continuously pounded it into the, into the disciples' minds. Love one another. Love one another as I've loved you. Love one another. We have to stay above the waters, above the seas. And we know what the earth means. We understand that we came from the earth. And because a man said, what happened? God said, cursed be the earth. Dust thou art, and from dust thou shalt return. We read in First Corinthians chapter fifteen: he, he that is earthly, let him be is earthly. He that is spiritual, let's turn. Let's turn to that. Let's turn to First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Amen. All right. Let's look at verse 47. Ah, we'll start on verse 46. All right. How be, how be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The Holy Spirit told me, the Lord said, everything that is created, everything that we see, Everything that happens naturally has a spiritual, uh, um, uh, spiritual and, and 
antidote or spiritual spiritualness behind it, right? For example, the sun, right? Right? We know the spirituality is the Jesus Christ as the sun, right? The light giving the light of the world, right? Right? And then everything else, the Holy Spirit told me that everything that is natural has something spiritual, has a spiritual meaning to it. Right? So we continue to read. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Verse 48. As is the earthy, so are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. So if we are of the earth and we remain earthy, fleshly, right, we will remain in death. Though we are in this earthly person, the Holy Spirit can change us can renew us, can change our inner man, right? As we read in Galatians chapter five, and they that are Christ have what? Crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. The Lord desires for us to be crucified from the inside out and change to a spiritual person. How be it that which is not which is spiritual, but that which is natural? All right. And in, in verse 49, in verse 48, let's read that again. As is as is the earthly, such are they that are also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And we will receive a heavenly body. But you know what? The Lord desires for us to do it, to do it now. The Lord desires to begin now in us. To change us now, to bring us above the earthly realm, mentally and spiritually, to bring us above the realm of iniquity. Because I'm telling you, that's the only way we're going to be saved. It's a reason why Jesus said, if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived. It's a reason why the word of God says, what? For the righteous shall scarcely be saved. If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? People, we got to remain above the seas. How do I do it? How do I do that? Through walking in the spirit, not in the flesh. How do I do that? Through constant prayer and communication with the Holy Spirit. Reading of my word. Fasting. Being sold out to God. Well, that's too much. Well, I work. How in the, how in the world that's going to happen? We, it can happen. I looked at my own, I looked at Joseph and I said, wow, he remained spiritual in a society that was demonic. Joseph stuck to his principles of loving God in a place that worshiped multiple gods. And he didn't have the Holy Spirit. We have no excuse. The Lord has given us the Holy Spirit. He has given us of the Holy Spirit to keep 
us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his throne. I tell you, I thank the Lord every day for the power of the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, we won't be kept. It's impossible to be kept. You can't stand. It's impossible to stand against the wiles of the enemy without being filled continuously with the Holy Spirit. We have to be continuously filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And how do I do that? That is constant prayer, communication with the Lord every day. And if I could do it twice a day, three times a day, I'll do it. Because if I don't, I know in my spirit, in my flesh, that I cannot stand. That the enemy will come. Just a little bit of leaven will come into my spirit. And that's it. I can't afford it. I have to remain above the waters. And Satan will do everything in his power. He's going to try to do everything in his power to take us down. To try to distract you. He's going to use family members. He's going to use your loved ones. He's going to use the people at your job. To try to deter us from being those people, those sons of God that God has called us to be. Those elect. Those escaped. Escaped from what? Escaped from the waters. Escaped from the waters of iniquity, the seas of iniquity. We got to be escaped. We got to be escaped from the seas. We got to be above the waters. Remain in the heavens. It's so beautiful when we are. I'm telling you, it is a beautiful, it's beautiful when you are in a heavenly realm. Well, we have to remain there. We got to remain there. Amen. Amen. Do we got any questions? Amen. Hey, says you go ahead. Um. Wait. Is uh, Apostle Miller? Were you raising your hand? Turn oh, your I'm mic on. Turn your mic on. Can't hear you. Turn your mic on. I think mommy turned off her video. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead, see. Oh, oh, sir. So many things came to mind. When you were in Galatians chapter 5, uh, 24, I read that in the Amplified, and it says, and those who belong to Christ Jesus, the Messiah, have crucified the flesh. Yes. God's human nature with its passions and mm -hmm. amplifieds and desires. That's right. That's mm -hmm. a threefold thing right there. Amen. Passions, appetites, and desires. Amen. I was like, Lord, deliver thou me. Yeah. Yes, Lord. 
every day. Yes, yeah, five. And then you yeah. were talking about um, the spirit of the world. And what came to mind is the spirit of the age is antichrist. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every and anything antichrist. And then 1 John 2, 18 clearly says it. Amen. Mm-hmm. 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 And even now, antichrist are here. We're born here. Amen. That mind, amen. The spirit of the age is everything antichrist, amen. So, we're gonna yeah. have a Christian club now, we're gonna have a Satan's club. Mm-hmm. The church want to do this up. Oh, let me come in and just let me come in and let's do our own thing. Antichrist, antichrist, antichrist. Now, not really, we don't have that mindset as well. Amen. Mm-hmm. 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 When you want to do your own thing instead of his thing, that's antichrist. Amen. Mm-hmm. When you want your own will and desire, that's antichrist. Yeah. Why? Because Matthew's what? 633 says that we are to seek what? Yeah, yeah, the kingdom of God. And what? And his righteousness. Then all other yeah. things will be added unto them. But we're so oh, happy right. about the other things. Oh, right. Yes, Lord. But we don't seek his kingdom and righteousness. Yes, Lord. That's antichrist. Yes, Lord. The substance in the sea, the debris and dirt and the mire in the sea. Amen. The trouble, the mm-hmm. aggravation in the sea is anti-Christ. Amen. Mm-hmm. 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 Then you talked about loving our brother. First John. Okay, one night. He that said he is in the light and hated his brother is Amen. in darkness even until um, now. Now. First John 2.11. He that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goes because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Amen. Verse 9, 3, 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Amen. So he's equating hate with murder. He can commit the murderer's out. Amen. 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 Now there is a righteous hatred, but then there is an ungodly, unnatural hate. Amen. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Amen. First John 420. If a man say I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. Amen. He that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hasn't seen? Amen. And of course, we don't say the word hate with our mouth. We would never be so bold to do that. But in our actions, in the intent of our heart. Amen. Yes. 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 One another. Amen. He sees that as hate. Just like what he said of that, he that looketh on a woman. That's right. Amen. Has already committed adultery with her already in his heart. So it's a heart thing too. Find the scripture for me. So sir, that 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 stirred me. 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 You're saying be above the waters, be in that heavenly place. Like you said, so if we don't crucify this flesh on a daily basis, we will continue to drown. Amen. 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 But what you say, I'm not drowning naturally. No. But your spirit, man, 
What's more important to you? This flash or the spirit man? Amen. What you're hungry for, you'll eat that appetite. Mm -hmm. What you're hungry for, you will eat. Mm -hmm. And some of us are so gluttonous in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus. It manifests itself naturally. Amen. Yes. First natural, then the spirit. That's right. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, but not me. That no, no, mm -mm. no, no. I beg, the, I, I challenge you. They each and every one, and, and I've done this, and I'm doing it myself. That there are still things that need to be delivered. Amen. 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 Things Amen. that still need to be broken. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And strongholds. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. That Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. That out of each and every one of our lives. Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. No one is exempt. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. You want to stay above the waters? Stay free. Yeah, stay humble. <laughs> oh, boy. Submit to his lordship yeah. in the way he wants to do a thing in your life, Man. not your way. That's right. Verse where I can be found. Right. Jesus, you know that's true. You know that's true. Go ahead, Apostle Miller. Go ahead, I just Apostle. want to add to what you just said about sinking. Basically, if you don't want to sink, keep yourself with the life preserver vest. Amen. Your life preserver vest is the love of Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, you know, Lord. is the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. People think it's not possible to live an overcoming life. You find this thinking in the church. Amen. Well, I, they, they don't believe that they can be overcomers. They believe that they can be saved. But to go on further to know the Lord, they do not believe that they can overcome some things because I'm only human. You know what I mean? Well, Christ was also human. Amen. You know, and he experienced the human condition, you know, because if that was not so, when he went to the garden, and he started to pray, and the prayer was so heavy into him that he got up and he wanted to see if his disciples were praying along with him. You know, his prayer warriors, do they have his back? Well, they were all asleep, you know, and Jesus was there by himself. And yet he prayed unto God for us all. You know, he is our spiritual life jacket. Amen. 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 He's our spiritual life jacket, you know, Amen. and there is a scripture. Um, where's the scripture? Can you read that? Read it on. I weren't ready to get the scripture for me. Philippians 4 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. We've got to be. Uh, we, as you said, you put forth the challenge. I'm going to add to that challenge. And, you know, I'm going to challenge you this week to stand fast in the spirit of God. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean you have to walk around saying hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah out loud. We have a spirit in us. The presence of God makes that connection between he and I. And I can pray anytime. I can pray anywhere. Even when someone says, please pray for me, before I leave their presence, I've already prayed for them, you know, because I don't know if I'll ever see them again. I don't know where their walk is going to take them in life. So I prayed for them then, you know, and we have to be aware of what we're putting and what we're doing and what we're allowing in our presence that belongs to the Father, that belongs to him. When you read Genesis chapter one, and you know, if you read it all, we all know that 
Eve first sinned and then she gave it to Adam and Adam sinned against the God in him, the God spirit in him. And he exchanged that for the spirit of Antichrist. You know, the spirit of Antichrist was already in creation. And Amen. you're right. And it still is. Amen. You know? But we have to watch out for the counterfeit spirits. Amen. The counterfeit spirits that present themselves so much like the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is why we have to have what? We've got to be sober. Yeah. We have to be vigilant. We have to, I'm going to use a simple word. You have to be aware and on our toes. It's like you said, at all times, you know, because there's a counterfeit spirit. That's right. That will also bring you ideas that they are who they who the Holy Spirit is. Man. And you got to be able to discern this. If any time we needed our spirit of discernment, yeah. and on top of that, our armor it says, put on the helmet, put on the shield, put on this, put on that, and we know these things. Yeah. Because we talk these things to one another. Yeah. That if we go out undressed, we're holding ourselves open. Our spiritual vest is on is open. Unless you tie the vest up in front, you still will sink. If you don't have your vest properly on, that you can fight against these things, that you will be able to walk on water. Amen. Peter. If yeah. it wasn't so, God would not have had it so. Amen. Peter was yeah. a natural, ungodly man. But God loved him. Yeah. God loved him. God sanctified him. God endowed him with his power. And he became a great prophetess or a witness for Christ. And we have to have on our spiritual best. And no counterfeits. No counterfeits. Be aware of the counterfeits. Man. Be aware because they're out there. You know, I just wanted to share that word kept coming to my spirit as you were talking, Prophet this Kirtan. And while you were talking, you know, I said, oh, yes, that's what you're saying. Spiritual life jackets, you know, that would save our soul. Thank you, Father. Amen. Our presence with the Lord should be one of joy. Yeah. And not one of labor. Oh, I got to pray now. If there's no joy in it, you know what? It might be good for you just to do a little housework and then get your spirit ready for prayer. Amen. You know, That's there right. is a position that we have to prepare ourselves for prayer. Amen. We got to think about these things, you know. Because you don't know how God is going to use you. Is he going to use you in spiritual warfare? Or is he going to use you as the intercessor for that day? Is he going to use you as someone that needs to go forth and break up the foul ground just so that the army can pass through smoothly instead of walking on rocks and almost tumbling? No, we have to be able to be intercessors. We have to be able to read the field Frederick, you know this. I know when you were in the military, you all had to read the field. You had to look to your right, to your left. To the best of your knowledge, there wasn't a bomb on, on that path. Amen. But there are bombs on that path, and they're noticeable, and you can see them. But the unseen things is the things that trick us. The unseen things, you know, that we have to be aware of. And our spirit has to become connected to the presence of God. Amen. So that he can, and he will direct you. I can tell you the truth. He will direct you. And he will whisper a voice in his, your spirit. If you want to hear him, he will answer you. If you want a relationship with him, he will be there for you and with you. 
you know amen 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 uncle uncle joe what do you say yeah. no, can you hear me god bless you Yes, sir. Yeah, but move over. We can't see your face a little bit. Um, move in. Ah, better. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, I think as uh, Carol, as Carol was saying earlier, there was so much that popped into my heart and mind as you as you were saying so many scriptures. Uh, so I don't know where to begin, but I I open my mouth and let the Lord fill it. If I take too long, give me a couple of hand waves, like uh. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <Tyler. laughs> but, but when I think about uh, again, you, you know, staying above the water, and I think something that Prophet Miller said earlier about the continuing and the, con the continuing stopping, and it reminded me of the scripture in John chapter four, no, chapter fourteen, verse thirty and thirty-one, and it reads, uh, "I will no longer talk talk much with you." For the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me, but that the world may know, verse 31, that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandments, so I, so I do. Arise, let us go hence. And the classic Amplifier says this, I will not talk much with you more. I will not talk with you much more, for the prince or the evil genius or ruler of the world is coming. And he has no claim on me. And the Amplified goes on to explain what that means. He has nothing. He has nothing in common with me. There is nothing in me that belongs to him. Yeah. He has no power over me. And I love the fact is that, and, and that's what you're saying about getting rid of the dirt, the marriage, the sin of the water. You know, we have to make we have to let like make sure that. Well, two things you guys spoke to me like. It says the prince of this evil one is coming. But you notice here, there's no way that says Jesus is stopping him. Amen. There's no way to say that he is going to prevent him from coming. Amen. Our job is to be prepared that if it's going to keep on coming, he, he had the whole point right now. I I, I mean I, I get bothered when I hear people say the devil's under my feet. I brought his head is crushed. Then why are we afraid? Why are we what are we fighting something that's crushed to death? So it means you mean he must be alive and well, and he has a job to do. Our job to do. Is to do what to make sure that when he comes, there's nothing of himself yeah. in me or in us. Yes. Yeah. That we, that we, like we said earlier, we're reading our Bible, we're praying, we're fasting. We have that life jacket on of the Holy Spirit. That way, so so that when he comes, and he's going to come, because you and, and also we read the next verse in verse 31, it says again. I like when 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 certain things are written twice. I remember Marilyn Hickey said it means it's important. Amen. In verse 31, it says. But Satan is coming. Yes. And I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know, the world may be convinced that I love the Father and that I do only what the Father has instructed me to do. I love this part here. It says, I act in full agreement with his or God's orders. Yes. Rise and go hence. And that's, the, that's one of the points uh, of uh, John 14, 30, 31. Our job again, and we're all saying the same thing. If we if we want to stay above the water, we're going to have to act in full agreement yeah. with God's orders. We got to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and everything else that we think that we think and want or need. They're going to come. They come afterwards. But we first got to meet the first condition. One of the things I find that <laughs> I think that's a positive, uh, I think probably most said earlier, the church the church today, we don't like conditions set on us. Amen. The fact is that we 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 don't mind talking about how in 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 in, in, in uh, and like I said, stop me if I get too long. Uh, in, in Psalms chapter twenty three, I I love Psalms twenty three, and it has all those promises: the cut running over, and in, in lay in the valley. But what is the condition in that scripture? The first the first verse is the Lord your shepherd. Yeah. If He's yeah. not in charge. How can you claim the rest of that verse? Amen. The rest of the scripture. But when people love claiming it, but they don't want him to be Lord. They love claiming it belongs to you, not master. Amen. You know, we don't like to meet conditions. Guil hey, hey, well, it's past this. And, and I, I can be guilty of that as well. The whole point, even John 3.16 says that whosoever believeth should not perish, 
You got to yeah. believe. Yeah. It's a condition. That's right. Yeah. We need to connect. God has set a condition. We have to believe in him. In him. And um, but that verse stuck in mind the fact that one, Jesus is not stopping the enemy from coming. Amen. Because he, he's given us the weapons of a warfare. You were talking about earlier, I think I probably were talking about standing. Pat and I were having our morning devotions today, and I closed with uh putting on the whole arm of God, and then the one part it says, having done all to stand. What are you supposed to do? Stand fast. Sometimes we, we sometimes I think we're too ready to fight when the fat guy should just stand. Amen. Sometimes the battle is his, but we, sometimes we made so much energy trying to fight the devil when that battle God didn't cause stand. When it, when it, when the children of Israel went around the, the the walls of Jericho, what would what would they do the first sixteen days? The six first six days, they didn't go attacking the wall. They they actually had to keep quiet. Amen. For six days. Yeah. Quiet for six times on the seventh day, like that. To me, people say that the shout brought the wall down. I don't believe that. Amen. What brought the wall down was their obedience. Yeah. But if one person had shouted or made a noise, that would it, nothing would have happened. What brought the wall down when they were able to shout in obedience? The wall came down. Remember when Achan went in there and he took of the unclean thing, he and his family got destroyed. That's right. We, we, we have to follow the conditions in the way of God and be obedient to God and uh this is, so again so much more and i'll say it again stop me when you get tired Go ahead. <laughs> uh, uh, well i'm taking a break the missus wants to speak <laughs> <laughs> you know i think about how the scripture says endure yeah, endure yeah. yeah. we want to be soldiers in the army of the lord we want to sing about being a soldier but he says if we're willing and obedient we shall eat of the good of the land. Yeah. He says, if we suffer with him, we will reign with him. But you know, even the church world has pushed aside suffering. Well, you know, it's, it's just too hard. God, just cover me in the blood and just wrap me in your love. Yeah, he said, I'm gonna wrap you in my love. I'm gonna cover you with my blood, but I'm sending you forth as soldiers that are in the army of the Lord. He says, be strong, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, goeth Amen. forth as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So this is not a time to let down our guard or to take, I'm just going to take a sabbatical, you know, in the spirit. And God knows I've been, no, no, no. You know, we have to follow on to know the Lord. We have to fight the good fight of faith that we might lay hold on eternal life. Yes. That's how we get where God wants us to be. Laying hold on eternal life is part of when he wakes us up in the middle of the night saying, yes, Lord, I'm so sleepy, but I say yes to your will, yeah. I'm coming to your presence. We may not have so much to say just at immediately, but we can begin with just worshiping God. Yeah, He inhabits the praises of his people. And as we worship him, he will begin to put a prayer in our hearts. He will begin yeah. to put things on our mind. He will begin to allow us to uh, sense his presence wherever we are at that yeah. moment. Hallelujah, because I tell you, we are anointed for such a time as this, people of God. We yes. are anointed to go forth. The enemy has pushed us, not just us, but the people of God that God is calling to go forth. The enemy has pushed us back. Amen. But God, that we're to push forward, we're to follow on, we're to put on our, our, our the whole arm of God, girding yes. our loins yes. with truth, putting on the breastplate of righteousness, shining our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. Above all, taking that shield of faith. But as we stay in the word, those uh, garments that he's telling us to put on will begin to begin to um, gravitate to us. They will. Yes. They will. Just, just like have you seen movies where, you know, like a magnet just draws things to them. Well, so is prayer and worshiping God. It draws the things that we need of God to us. And sometimes you don't even realize it's in you, but as you open your mouth, as I open my mouth to pray, to worship, to speak, we don't even know what we're going to say. I'm telling you, the spirit of the Lord will well up in you and he will go forth as a mighty wind and he will cut like a sword. And he will I don't expect people to go, oh, praise God, you are you are a man of God, you are a woman of God. No, they're gonna rise up against you because the enemy wants to bring doubt and defeat in our hearts and our minds. He's not gonna want us to feel like, oh, I, I you know, I got I'm on the right track. No, but you keep following on to know that we keep doing it, we keep applying the blood, we keep applying the word, we keep applying the sword, cutting away those things that are not of God. So yeah. I don't want 
one, but amen. Praise God. Amen, 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 amen. Go ahead, Uncle Joe, amen. I'll I, I try to make it short. Uh, but it, uh, so many things, when you, when you talked about you know, you know, living, holy, getting rid, you know, doing the right thing. Revelation and Galatians talking about getting rid of different things in our lives we have to get rid of. And I and I can't remember something else someone said about uh, we, oh, basically we have to be. Uh, I forget the word. I wrote it down, but I can't read my own handwriting. We have to be something. And I always remember when it says, "How can two walk together unless they be agreed?" So I looked up the word "be." It's a present tense verb means to live or exist in that state. So we have to exist and live in a state of holiness, yes. righteousness, truth, every, as you said earlier, every single day. Yes. And, and the Apostle Muller said, a lot of times, we don't believe we can. The church, you know, my wife was saying that, you know, the devil stopped us. But let's be truthful. We've stopped ourselves sometimes. Amen. We, we've been, sometimes we've been a bigger, and I can only, and I'm speaking for myself, we Amen. can be our own biggest hindrance. Amen. And Amen. then we wonder why nobody respects us or like that. Or Amen. or what I used to find out when I used to go to different churches, you know, and, 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 and I expected the minister to minister to me. And again, despite what all's happened through turning point, there's God has given us a, a unique situation with threat that that certain when we talk about sonship and all like that, that certain people can't only give us but so much. They can yes. only give us mm. what they have been given by God. Yes. They, it's not their job to, to feed certain certain things that we want for them. It's our to see God uh, see God for it's ourselves. Like that. Yeah. You no, know, in 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 uh, second or oh, in Titus chapter two, verse eleven and twelve. Well, actually eleven and fifteen, but I hear it's me eleven and twelve. Titus two eleven and twelve. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness Amen. and worldly lust, oh. we should live soberly, righteously, yeah. godly. But when and where in yeah. this present age, Amen. For the great by and by, Timothy Titus is telling us in this present age or present time. Amen. Which means, as Sister Mill said, God by His Spirit in Ezekiel chapter thirty-six, verse twenty-six. I, I think it's twenty-four to twenty-six or beyond. It says, God took out the stony heart and gave us a heart of flesh. Amen. But I like the other part. But then he put his spirit in us to do what? Yeah. Cause us to walk in his way. Yeah. As you said, you know, and something you said earlier about, uh, I think you, uh, someone talked about Moses or Joseph. And I think you may have said it, or I may, I may have thought you said it. You know, it's funny about someone like Abraham and Joseph. Is there anywhere in the scripture that they were filled by the whole with the Holy Spirit? <laughs> yet they still obey God. Amen. I don't I don't say that. But because they follow God with it. So if, if they can do it without the infilling of the Holy Spirit, Amen. why can't we do when we have it from the Holy Spirit? Amen. Joseph, this, like you said, despite what he went through, he went through he now again they, they say some commentators said that he didn't say much about God, but the whole point he lived godly. The Amen. hand of God. <laughs> Even if they didn't say much, Potiphar saw the hand of God upon his life. The, the, right. the prison guard saw the hand of God upon his life. Right. The Pharaoh put him second command, so saw the hand of God upon his life. Even with Moses, God said that you would be a God to Moses like that. Amen. And these men that we know of, they was not in the same thing, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. They trusted and relied on God. Right. And believe me, I, I don't say there's a common name, I'm saying, Lord. Help me, yes, Lord. Help me yes. if they can do it. You know, and you talk about earlier, but people are looking for it, that love of God. I remember when I met the years ago, I, when we, I was in Philadelphia, I we went we went we went to uh, the prison to, to minister to prison, and there was a minister, and and he was he was a prisoner in the prison. How he got there, I don't know. He's he's still a preacher, as far as I know. So I call him minister. But he said when I was out and I saw you walking about in the neighborhood. I never saw you in the wrong. God reminds me that and you never know who's watching you. Amen. Even on my job, they, they know that I'm a Christian. I, I don't talk much about Christ like that. But you know what? They even make sure I don't watch certain movies. Amen. Make sure you don't watch that show. Amen. What was that about? What was the thing about the Amen. castle, the crown, what was the TV series? Crown. Uh, the, the crown or the, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And he said, you better not watch that show. They will make sure that I don't watch it. <laughs> you watch what? Like that. So they want to keep me holy. Well, God will use them to keep Man. me holy. So the whole point, we got to make it. And sometimes, like I said, I don't get a chance to talk much about Christ because I, I deal with psychiatrists and social workers 
who are, have who are basically, as, as Sister Carol said, are anti-Christ. Yeah. It's, and most of them are some because they've seen some of the damage that Christ people have done to certain people. Mm -hmm. Like they give example, one woman, she her and her husband went to a pastor to, to, to get counseling. The pastor said, well, woman, if you be more submissive to your husband, then he, then, then he wouldn't have to do what he did like that. So she was putting the, all the fault on her. So 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 they, so some of them have some some right grievances like that, so the antichrist like that. But my whole point is something again, like I said earlier, and I am going to be quiet because I can go on. Uh, is that God is dealing with me? Something someone else said earlier is that God is dealing with me that when I get up in the morning and I pray, that once I step out of my prayer room, that I have to make sure I'm manifesting that love, and it begins exactly. in 32, 39 Michigan Avenue. It begins in my house. Amen. I can't say go to church or go to God. I'm going to be holy. Amen. If the lady next to me, the sleeping next to me, doesn't see His holiness in me, then the fact is that I, I, I've already lost the message. Amen. Amen. It, it begins and ends in this house and beyond, like that. So you know, yeah. and, I, and again, I can say it again. One last thing, I hate to say that again, but I'm reminded again. Someone talked about uh, what, uh, uh, I can't remember. But anyway, I'll say what I wrote to me. Uh, the Hebrew boys and Daniel. The fact is that in the Hebrew boys, and I think I mentioned before. When they would put then when they were put in the fire, they were tied seven times tighter than they were. The fire was seven times hotter. But the only thing when they got in the fire and Jesus was there, the only thing that was loose from them is that which bound them while they were in the fire. And the other thing is that with Daniel, neither the Hebrew boys or Daniel, they couldn't come out of the, the lion's den or out of the fire until who said so? The king. Amen. So yeah. in certain situations, God will put us in, yeah. and we're not going to be released until the King That's of right. Kings said it. But the whole point, Jesus is there with us. That's right. Yeah. He's going to come like that. He's going to stand like that. So yeah. love you. I'm going to be quiet. Amen. 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 Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. My mom. Take your mic off, Millers. <laughs> Turn your mic on, I mean. If you hover over your, your picture, you should be able to see the mic. There you go. You got it? Oh, okay. No, I, I just, uh, when you were talking about, you know, the sea, and the, the scripture came to me in uh, Revelation 15 and uh, 2, where it says, and I, and I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, right. over the number of his name, stand on, on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Amen. Yes. So, you know, amen. Yeah. that victory, amen, gets us in that place of standing uh, on that sea over the, over uh, the sea. And, and the other thing I wanted to say too, is I remember some years ago how Nathaniel had the revelation about uh, Jesus walking on the water. <laughs> and it, it just, uh, you know, it, uh, God had showed him something out of that and uh, how he shared that with us and stuff. I don't, I guess he ain't with us today, right? But, uh, you know, praise God. That's all I had. Amen. It's beautiful, beautiful. Amen. 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 Everybody, oh, wow, you guys got even uh, beautiful stuff, beautiful. Uh, uh, from uh, mom and Carol, you guys uh, made one point as far as my belief. Right, Uncle, Uncle Joey spoke about believing, right, in John chapter uh, 3, verse 16, right? Mm -hmm. Belief, if we believe, right? So if we look at the verse in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, but the fearful and unbelieving 
but the fearful and unbelieving. And, and I think, Carol, I think you you either, or, or, or Uncle Joey, uh, uh, you, you guys stated something as far as people love the Lord, right? They're Christians. They're saved. But like you said, oh, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can get there. I don't think I can be an overcomer. So what do we call that? Is that belief or unbelief? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's unbelief. What did Jesus say? But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. So it's not just enough for us to just say, yes, Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Like Aunt Pat said, we have to be overcomers. Mm. We have to stand fast. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand. Stand fast. Brother Miller, you put it perfectly. Mom, you put it perfectly. Uncle, Uncle Joe, you put it perfectly. Jesus walked over the water. On the water. And like you said, Uncle Joe and I pet, the sea, the, the waves were still coming. The waves were still coming. The, the, the wind was still blowing. Even when Peter got on the water, the wind was still blowing. What made him get fearful was the wind and the waves. And that's when he began to sink. The storm didn't stop until what? Until they got into the boat. Glory to God. And Brother Miller, you put it perfectly. They walking on the glass, on the glass. And they were overcomers. They were overcomers. That is what the Lord desires for us to be, is to be overcomers. Overcomers over our flesh. Overcomers over the world and over the antichrist spirit. Oh, I'm not going to accept the mark of the beast. <laughs> I'll never accept the mark of the beast. You ain't going to have a choice. If the beast is already living in me and I'm with the beast, I'm going to accept the mark. If the Antichrist is in me and I'm holding hands with the Antichrist or Antichrist spirit, mm -hmm. what will keep me from not accepting the mark of the beast? Oh my God. The Holy Spirit is not in me. Right. Carol, can you read Colossians chapter three, verse five in the Amplified? Yes, sir. You said um, three, five? Uh huh. Colossians chapter three before you. It says, So kill, deaden, deprived of power, the evil desire lurking in your members. Those animal impulses and all that is earthly in you that is employed in sin Amen. sexual vice impurity sensual uh, appetites unholy desire and all greed and covetousness for that is idolatry the defying of self 
and other created things instead of God. Amen. The divine of self. Right, the deifying of self and other created things instead of God. Putting everything else ahead of God. Right? Healing of the flesh, mortifying the flesh, the deeds of the flesh to kill, deaden, deprive of power. How can I deprive of power the evil desires lurking in my members. Mm, mm, mm. James chapter uh, one, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted to any man, but every man is tempted, what? Of his own lust and enticed. Mm -hmm. How can I kill the evil desires lurking in my members? Through prayer, through killing of my flesh, like I'm Pat said, the Lord wake me up in the morning. Oh Lord, oh, oh, oh I'm so tired. It's time to pray. The Lord want to speak to me. The Lord wants us to pray for someone. Someone needs prayer. Obeying the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Walking in the Spirit and what? Not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Like I past said, if we continuously do it, it becomes natural. It becomes like second nature. It becomes a habit. It becomes a habit. We begin to walk in the Spirit and don't even know we're walking in the Spirit. Carol, you got it. You go. Ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, what came to mind when you said it? I, I believe, what traps up a lot of believers is disobedience. Amen. And 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 that's what got Saul in trouble. He obeyed in some, but not all. Amen. That's what got Aiken in trouble. As Apostle Har Harrison said, he. He he took he took he disobeyed. Amen. And in doing so, destroyed his whole house. Amen. It is critical for us to be obedient in this hour, even if everyone forsake you. Amen. Amen. Even if they think you're not hearing right, that you're spiritually off. That you're not hearing from the Lord. Amen. Amen. That you're not super righteous or get Amen. your head out the clouds. Amen. Disobedience will cost us our very lives and the lives Amen. of those connected to us. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Wow, to obey the Lord, and, and it's and it starts little, it's never something big, amen. Amen. It's never something big. That's how skeptical our enemy is. He ain't amen. gonna come up with nothing big because he knows you're gonna see it offhand. Amen. He's off, so he's gonna start with something tiny. Don't eat this. God amen. said, Don't eat something, right? A particular thing, whatever it is, right? I don't drink this. The Lord amen. says, Don't drink something. And you out and about, you with friends, you mingling, you doing whatever you at work. And that very thing he told you not to drink. Oh, well, well, you know, I'm at work. I'm mingling, you, you know, you drink. But that's still that's your Amen. Amen. Right, you said waking up, leading of the spirit, waking up. The Lord says, wake up. But no, you want that you, your sleep is too good. Man. That sleep hits you just right. Or for 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 some reason you have become extremely tired. Amen. 
uh, Derek Prince called it an unnatural tiredness. Which is true. <laughs> what is the cost to be fully obedient in this hour? Yes, Lord. Yes. Light. Yes, Father. Ain't nobody like this going to send me to heaven or hell. Yes, Father. Yes. I gave a challenge last week for no television for seven days. Everybody can turn your mic on now. <laughs> Can you hear me? I hear you now. Can you just stop that? Okay. Seven days. Shut it off. Shut down the television. Mm -hmm. No TV for seven days. Did anybody um mm -hmm. decide to do the challenge? I have an excuse. I didn't know about it till today. I'm going to ask you, did you watch yeah. television at all for seven days? Are you asking who you asking, sweetie? I'm asking Latay. Oh. No, I didn't. So the TV was shut off for the whole seven days. Yeah. Man. Did, the Lord deal, did the Lord deal with you during these seven days? Yes. Would you like? Yes, but but it was my. I mean, he's been dealing with me. Period. So Man. I think that with the the only time I did have the TV on is because I had Jackson, and um. I turned it on just to distract him, but I fell asleep. Of course, he kept waking me up, but um, I just, but as for me and my shows and the stuff that I watch and everything like that, no, I just watched, uh, I just listened to like, I turned my computer on and I would just listen to like prophecies and, and the like, um, you know, the people that read the Bible and stuff to you while you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. So I listened to that. Um, yes, I had a, a couple of little strange dreams, and uh, um, but my sleep was was pretty peaceful, and um, I don't know. He did, yeah, because I I was doing something with my daughter, talking to her on Facetime, and she had uh no someone had sent me something on like a TikTok, but he was um talking about uh I can't remember what he was talking about. But it has something to do with, like, you know, uh, Jesus and everything. And I just, like, this, I just started speaking in tongues and praising the Lord. I was like, where that? I told my daughter, oh, he was talking about generational curses being broken. And I just. <laughs> so I know my daughter probably like, what in the world? I said, listen, I'm sorry. I, I had to, I, you just don't understand. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, so, um, but it was crazy because before you had said anything about um that that day that you said something about the seven day challenge about t v and stuff, I had already i i had got i was up earlier that morning and had my my time with the Lord that morning, and as I was studying and stuff, um that had came across, and I remember saying out loud, like, Lord, you know, um." I said, I'm working on that TV thing. I'm not going to really watch as, you know, as much TV. But I had noticed that before that, though, my TV watching hasn't been as, like, much. Even before, you know, you said anything, I had noticed that. I didn't realize it until, like, later that my TV time had started going down even before. You know what I mean? So I would, you know, if I'm doing something, I would have, like, the music on or um, listening to, like, a... Uh, you know, prophecies or just listening to things about the Lord and stuff like that. And I have been just learning so much that it's like now it's like certain things. I just be like, 
I don't know. It's like this oddness, this falling in love. Yes, baby. Now, can I ask you a question? Did you understand the challenge to me? But you specifically, I'm not talking about Jackson. Um, completely having the television off. What do you mean? Like because everybody's comprehension and understanding is different. So I just want to make sure each person understood the challenge. Um, what did you understand the challenge to me? Oh, as far as just like not. Um, well, for me, I usually have the TV on a lot of times at nighttime because that's just my way of like going to sleep. It helps me like just to have that little background noise to go to sleep. It's like almost like. Um, That's mo most mo most military people they, yeah, they put the TV on so that they can go sleep at night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 it's just that that yeah. So it was just that that little bit of like that background. But I, and um, you know I, you can't get engulfed. I feel as though like sometimes I can get caught up and engulfed with watching stuff that it can take time or away from um doing whatever you know what i mean so um yeah i don't know i mean i just took it as you know to spend you know hear from the lord spend more time you know study just yes ma'am uh, yes ma'am just to enjoy the presence of the Lord, enjoy like just him and you, you know what I mean? Or I can't yeah. you, but me, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So um, I definitely, I, I did, I did. It was a little challenge at first, like when it first, like when you know how something is when you first start off with doing something, you know what I mean? You like, you like, first you're like, oh, at first I was like, okay, yeah, cool. You know, but then I'm like, hmm, what do I do now? <laughs> So it was like it was like one of those. I mean, yeah, true. I try I try to study for my exam for for my next um you know promotion, but you know what I'm saying? But even still, I would still have like the TV on at least for like that little bit of background. So to now it's to like complete silence and it was kind of awkward at first, you know what I mean? But then I don't know. Then as time went on, like I said, uh, I would just put my laptop on and then like the book of Ezekiel would be playing, the book of John, the book of Mark, like different, you know, that was like playing until, you know, it will, you know, the, the computer will either go off or something like that, or I would turn over and maybe turn it off or I don't know. But even still, it was just like that. I just had like a different type of peacefulness. It was, it was different. I can't explain it. Thank you for I, that. I can't. Yes. Because people don't, you don't know what you consume until it's taken from you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know how much you consume of something until you separate yourself from it. Mm -hmm. And that was part of the challenge to, to, to get us to be aware of how much of the vision of the world, the television, we could on a daily basis and only giving God, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, but we giving TV, the vision of the world, and I'm not saying nothing's wrong with the television, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, is that when we're called to a higher level, mm -hmm. some things do begin to drop off. Mm -hmm. Some appetites do wean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you will begin to fall in love with the Amen. 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 So that's why I asked you what it meant to you, and I'll ask each individual um as well. God, oh, thank you so much um for being honest there, and I'm keep it up, hey, because you got you. The Lord is taking you some places, girl. It's gonna blow your mind. It's gonna blow your mind, ma'am. And I'm excited. Oh. I'm excited. Okay. I told the Lord that. I told him, I said, Lord, I'm excited, you know, because he has me writing stuff down all the time. And so it's like, that's right. That's right. Amen. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, Jackie, you, I saw you raised your hand. So, what did you, um, believe the challenge meant? Um, what was your, um, comprehending of your challenge? 
Well, at first, okay, I'm going to start here. At first, I was like, okay, my computer is not working properly. So I have a DVD that is the Holy Bible. So mm -hmm. I put that on and I did that Sunday and Monday. And I think, I think it was Monday that I had said something to you about it. And you said, well, what is the Lord saying to you? And I was like, well, I'm, you know, to me, it was an excuse. Seriously, it was an excuse. And after you said that to me, I thought about it and I was like, you know what? Television is television. Okay, I know it's the Bible and I know all I'm doing is, is uh, listening to the word of God, but it's television. Man. So I cut the television off. So I understand what you were saying when you said, what does it mean to you? Yes, you know, so I had to repent. I had to ask the Lord to forgive me because I I realized that it was an excuse. It was just another reason to turn on the television, mm -hmm. you know. So I after after that, I, I turned the TV off, period, just off. And I just went to my phone and I was like, okay, I will listen to the Bible um, for a period of time. And when it when I need to recharge the Bible, that's the time that I need to be quiet. That's the time that I just need to just praise God and just listen for him to speak to me, you know, because I, I have issues with that silence. Mm -hmm. you know so um god had just he just he was speaking to me ooh, like ooh. you know this is the time that you need to to get into me this is the time you just need to be still and be quiet and listen to my voice because i'm always saying well i don't hear god saying nothing to me well of course i don't hear nothing god saying to me because i'm too busy with this other noise Mm. You know, mm. so how mm. can I hear him? Because he's not going to over talk. Mm -mm. You know, that's he's not going to do that. He's like, OK, if that's what you want to hear, then fine. If that's what you want to do, then fine. I'll be over here waiting for you, mm. you know. So it just gave me the opportunity to start being quiet, start listening, just mm -hmm. being still, you mm -hmm. know. So it gave, and I also got the the, the uh, opportunity to witness more to my mother, mm -hmm. you know, um, because I was telling her, you know, that this challenge that we were doing, and it, it was a challenge, <laughs> really, you know, um, to not turn the TV on. She was like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. I said, yeah. I said, well, it's a challenge, you know. I said, but the thing is, day by day, the more you do it, the more you want to do it, mm -hmm. and the more you want to do it, the more it, it feels good. Yeah. You know, you you get to the point where you don't even miss that miss television. Yeah. You know, I don't even miss it. And I was like, you know what? Okay, well, today is the last day, but I think I might keep going. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's not it's not important to me anymore to turn that TV on. You know, so you know that's 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 what I got out of it. Amen. Thank you, you for know. being vulnerable and honest about it. Let me tell you, uh, I started going. I I didn't turn the TV on, but then I started playing games on my phone. The Lord says, "Really?" And I said, <laughs> "Really? Is, is that bringing you entertainment? You're entertaining yourself, right? By, even though it was on my phone, it wasn't on the television, but it brought me pleasure, right?" Amen. Amen. Yeah, I had to stop Amen. playing my games, yo. <laughs> and one of them games I played for, so I said, Oh, that's a whole weekend game. I ain't playing. You know what I'm saying? Oh. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta admit, I watched the 
episodes of Star Trek. Yeah, so <laughs> you are, what? We are just a Star Trek. Trek. We, what you say? Star Trek what? Is on. Yeah, what? Well, I watched two episodes of Star Trek. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, I play I play games on my but I play game on my no, phone no, every no, night. But I always that, tell that was just for me though. Like, that oh. was just oh. for me. It depends on your spiritual level now. Because the, one of the questions the Lord asked me during my time, He says, "Well, how old are you spiritually?" Amen. Amen. Because oh. you might be seventy naturally, but that don't mean you seventy in the spirit. You could be years old in the spirit. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you could be 22 in the natural and be 50 years old in the spirit where Amen. God is concerned. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Got old natural people being child, children. Lord Amen. have mercy on my soul. Yes, go ahead, Miller. Yes. Mom, yes. We're going to get you right with the hand. Yes, we are. We're going to get the hand right. <laughs> okay. Okay, I was going to just give a, a scripture of encouragement to uh, to Lete, um because the Lord I was just you know, is that right? It's that's not Lete. That's um oh. that's Lete. That's Lete. That, oh oh okay, baby. I'm glad I got the name right. That's all. You know, um the the Lord had given me and put in my spirit a day of rest. And I said, okay. I thought the Sabbath was my day of rest. By if I don't have to have things done by Friday at five p.m., I'm not dealing with them. You know, I could look at them a thousand times. I'm not gonna touch you. So um, I even try to cook enough so that we have leftovers. Or either I asked Randy to go stop and pick up something. So um, the scripture that he gave me. When I was having um, a problem um, adjusting to sleep, my own self, it's in the book of Proverbs. I've been reading Proverbs to, to, to ridiculous. Proverbs chapter three, verse 24, and it says this, when thou layest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Amen. And then it also says, Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Yeah. And when I read that and kept reading it, I, I almost colored this whole book here, you know. <laughs> Lord, I don't understand that you're telling me two things. That's you're awesome. telling me I will not, I, I can lay down, and I won't be afraid. Do you know some people are perpetually afraid to go to sleep at night? I mean, perpetually afraid to go to sleep at night. We should not have that in our lives as Christians. And it says, yea, thou shalt lie down and your sleep will be sweet. And you know what? I guarantee that. I guarantee. There are times that I have my, 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 um, my late nights, Randy will tell you, I do sit up sometimes at night, you know, and I don't turn the TV on until he gets home, you know, because either I'm vacuuming or I'm trying to to finish with some house chore that I just put off because I'm lazy, you know, and, you know, I realize God keeps his word. Amen. God keeps his word. You should never be disappointed. When God tells you to do something, because He will not come short of His promise. Amen. He will not. He will honor His. He what? He honors His word, even above His name. Amen. You know, and He also said in the word, when I could know, I when I couldn't find anybody to swear by. I what? I swore by myself uh-huh. that we should what, enter in. So when you look at all these things, God's not making it difficult. He didn't lay us out there in the pasture without anything. You read Psalms, you see St. John 16, St. John 17, St. John 18, and, and through the very end. Jesus prayed for us. Jesus, and I pray not for them only. But also for those that will believe 
on him through their through their testimony. Amen. And each of us came through Christ to Christ through somebody else's testimony. We didn't get here on our own. Somebody prayed for us. Amen. Somebody did warfare on our behalf. You know, but I do know this that God will give us sweet sleep when we obey. That's and just like you said, Prophet Kiritan, the main thing is that from the Genesis to Revelation was obedience. Amen. It's all in between the book is obedience. And he kept saying, you will have this as Israel. You will have this prosperity. You will have land. People will look upon you in awe. You know, all these wonderful things. But he also says, if thy will obey my voice. That's what he wants. You know, we have to be moved. When we always have to be moved, somebody always has to, oh, okay, help me, help me, help me, help me. Like, you know, help me. I gotta, I can't obey much. Pray for me that I'd be obedient. Pray for yourself that you should be obedient. Amen. You know, nobody should pray that for you. Pray that for yourself. <laughs> we will stand in warfare with you. I got your back. So be at peace. Go ahead. You know. That's all I wanted to, to share was that one scripture. That's all. Thank you. Okay, oh, sweetie, you're welcome, Thank baby. You. That's in Proverbs chapter 324. Verse 24. I wrote it down. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. And yeah. Oh, I just wanted to um, piggyback off um, what Barb was saying. You know, at night when I when I have my prayer, I notice a difference in my sleep. If I don't pray, Lord, give me that sweet sleep. Let me sleep in your sweet rest. Amen. You know, if I don't, if I don't verbally pray that prayer, yeah, my sleep, I sleep good, Amen. but I'm not, it's like a blanket That's when right. I pray that prayer. It's like a blanket yes. that the Lord just puts over me that I just I get some really good, good sweet yeah. sleep, you know. So yeah, that proverbs, proverbs is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yes, it is. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. Oh, Joe. Do you have anything to say? Do you have anything to say? Yes, no. Speak. No, I, I, didn't. Speak words. I was, I was just going to say. Um, <laughs> I didn't know we were supposed to. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. You guys got to use your hand. Um, uh, 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 Apostle Jeremiah had his hand up first, guys. There you go. <laughs> Praise him. You got it. You got it. Okay, you go after. <laughs> well, I, I, all I really wanted to read was like is that when I read that scripture, that's one of our uh, uh, and I daily scripture. But when I first read it, and, 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 and like again, I, I'm thinking like, like a soldier, and it says here, it says, uh, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down, and the sleep will be sweet. When I heard that word, yes, it's like an order. You will lie down, your sleep will be sweet, and Amen. nothing will harm you like that. But it's almost like God is commanding the atmosphere around me. Yeah. I will, I, was, I will have, no matter what's going on with the enemy, I want to keep my phone and get across. I don't share that when I first read this, like God saying, you will, your sleep will be sweet, so you lay down and don't come out. Amen. 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 You gotta put your hand up. You he already did. He already did. He has something to say. He's so shy. I don't know why. No, I, what I wanted to say was, uh, you know, years ago I became convicted, you know, that uh, I had to put away the things of the world, you know, and uh, I started buying Christian music, you know, to listen to and, you know, just uh, putting away the things that uh, the world runs after. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe I've failed in some ways, but uh, I still, you know, like when I go to work, 
I listen to some of these people and they're talking about, you know, they're watching these shows and all this, but, you know, I try to be an example of what it is to, you know, be a prophet to the company and, and work for a living. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, when I, and when I get up in the morning, I always yeah. try to spend time in the word, you know, before I go to work. You Amen. Know? And then um, the other thing too, I was going to say, when I get, get home why I've been, uh, we've been watching a wagon train. I don't know everybody ever watched it, but wagon train, almost every show has a, a, a Christian message on that show. And I, I never watched it when I was a kid, but uh, it's amazing to me, you know, because it's all like old, you know, old time and, you know, I don't have all the cursing and all the fleshly stuff, but uh, mm -hmm. it has a message, you know. I yeah. watch it. You do? Yeah, <laughs> I do. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so, uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I will we'll watch uh, the news, you know, yeah. because there's, I guess, just to see what the weather's going to be, you know, and just to, I think we need to stay heads up on something, especially if we're driving to work and and things like that but um there is some uh benefit uh but there is a lot of it that's just entertainment and and uh, of no profit whatsoever and uh, to try to put away those areas you know and then uh to make my life more fruitful amen praise amen. god amen. Amen. amen yeah carol um amen. So, Millers, did y'all um, do the challenge this week or no? <laughs> I know I didn't. I'm so sorry. Even though oh, the TV, the TV okay. is all, I have no TV on during the day when Randy's not here. <laughs> I just don't because I have stuff I can do. I can fold up my laundry that's sitting over there in a nice bag. I can go get my 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 Toto um, and Dorothy and Kansas bag, which has all my colors in it. I can do that. I have a pattern that's already been cut, you know, and I need to do my do my spread. So I, I got plenty to do. And um, there's really nothing on TV during the day, really, but a whole bunch of talk shows. I used to run from school to, to home where we live because as growing up, we lived really, the house that we had was was next to the school where they built. So I went to that school and I would run home to make sure I got the stories. I gotta have, I gotta mm -hmm. have the stories. The general hospital, I gotta see what's going on with Luke and Laura. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then I watched like the end is What about Dark Shadows? Yeah, and you know it. Oh I my God, you gave me away. <laughs> I was they still, they so still got dark right. shadows on. They still have it on. They still comes on. Dark shadows. Yeah. So, but thank God, I don't, I don't have that in me anymore. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't have any desire for those things anymore. Because I, I'm liking. You know, I don't know if anybody likes it, but Perry Mason comes on in the evening and on the daytime. He comes so on. You at don't, so you don't watch TV during the day, but you watch it at night. I watch it more at at night because um, that's the time where Randy and I are sitting right here together, okay. and I have my time with him because it's really shrunk down now. <laughs> it's, it's it's not not a couple of minutes. It's less than that before he oh. eats and sleeps, and oh, that that. And that's the end, you know. So the time that I have to communicate with him, talk about his job, you know, and what the Lord gave me the other day and things like that. And um, that's why. So we do it together. You know what I mean? But other than that, no, I don't have it on during the day. Um, I'd rather use my time to get other things done, you know. But to be honest with you, I do watch the black and whites, and they are on channel two, and um, they are all old, every last one of them, you know, from Bonanza to whatever stupid game show that's on, you know what I mean? That's not like mom. <laughs> well, you know me so well. Oh, that's okay, sweetie. Okay. Hey, Fred, go ahead. 
No, so yeah, today you almost have to watch the things of old. I mean, yes, right? yeah, that's true too. You really yeah. can't watch anything that's current today. You know, so yeah, I, I stick with all, all the old stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, anything. Yep. Mm-mm. Even some of the old stuff you can't watch. You know, so right, right. Yeah. So I now know. watch the, the cooking shows and and the animal shows. Gotta be careful. Yeah. yeah. I got into watching Pioneer Woman on HBO Max. Me and my daughter yeah. was watching that Pioneer Woman. That's the lady that be cooking and stuff. I was like, "How in the world am I watching this? I would never, I would never thought in a million years that I would watch something like would watch something like this." I said, "I know this is the Lord working on me because I have no desire. I have a BET subscription, and I half the time I forget until somebody remind me, you know. And I could care less about what's on BET." I, I just don't care. Yeah. Got to be they careful. The Christian, lot of, with the so-called the BBC so- thing, they do have a lot of animal stuff, yeah. nature stuff, and earth stuff that talks about science. It's a lot of science stuff in BBC. You know what I mean? And that's how we learned about um, the snakes that they had on you. Oh time. no, we uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. oh, I was just saying how they were talking about the wetlands, um, and how big the wetlands are, and in the state of our, uh Alaska, Alaska has the largest uh, land, which is called uh, what do you call it? swamp? We will call it a swamp, but it's called wetlands. Alaska has the largest wetlands on the planet. After that, it's Florida, you know? And I was just watching that. Every time I learn something, I share it with Randy. I said, you never know. That might come up as a Jeopardy question. And I know I'm it. done. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, baby. Why? She was trying to. Please say. No, please. I'm just laughing at you, um, uh, Barbara. I think it's cute. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I grew up different times. We would not have TV in our house. We couldn't afford one. When I was young, we could not afford a TV, you know. And now that God has blessed us, we need not to turn the blessing of God into a curse. Amen. 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 Hey, hey, sis, right before before I, before I call on you, but uh, some of us we gotta watch even the so called Christian movies that they have out there. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I gotta, agree. Gotta be I careful agree. With, the, with the Christian movies that they have out there. So I don't uh, watch them. You know, I mean, show a whole lot of cigarette smoking and drinking and, and still cursing. Uh huh. A whole lot of profanity, even in the Christian movies. The movie, yeah. So, yeah, so then it's not a Christian movie. Exactly. No, it ain't. No, it ain't, man. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. Go ahead, sir. Um, the whole point of the challenge was to um the word that comes to my initiate a greater discipline uh, within our appetites because uh sirs and ma'am there's going to come a time where uh, the TV will be propagated to a certain um, um, uh, thing and no one will be able to watch mm-hmm. you know uh, uh satan will have his all over all programs and television right. and so mm-hmm. um I, I think that if we can condition ourselves now, okay, amen. Before that time comes, we won't have no issues in the flesh. Amen. It's coming soon. Um, and and the different questions that he was posing to me to share with us all were one of them were, are we willing to make ourselves uncomfortable for the sake of the kingdom of the Lord? Amen. 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 Are we willing to self afflict, self deny our desire in place of kingdom purpose for the sake of the kingdom of the Lord? Amen. Amen. What is our current level of self denying? Amen. Yes. Amen. What is our current level and grade of our cross? Yes. Do we pick it up? Do we put it down? 
but we pick it up. Exactly. We pick it up, put it down, and they forget about it. Mm -hmm. You know, the inconsistencies. Are we willing to give up sleep, food, Amen. comfort, vices, self-indulgence, costly apparel, all way of life, jewels, money, vehicle, homes, people, our own selves, entertainment for the kingdom of the Lord. Amen. How old are we spiritually? Amen. I think I'm like five. I'm, st you know, I'm still getting there. I'm a stop. Go ahead, stop. You know what? You need to stop playing. Mm -hmm. Isn't there a scripture that says, "When I thought as a child"? No, yeah. What? First Corinthians, what? Fifteen. Thirteen. No, Thirteen. 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 See, you do that, okay? You know, yeah. when I was a child, I thought like one. Oh, amen. First I did those things as a child. Right. But when I became a man, that mature one, yes, I put away, I put away those things that were childish. Yes, yes, amen, amen. The next question was, what is our current level grade of self-discipline? Amen. It's word in Christendom. Amen. Discipline, what you talk about, I'm disciplined. Give, give up online shopping for a month. I, do, I, I dare not put that child in the job because I don't know. Some, some people, I don't know. Online, <laughs> no TV, you know, yeah. you know, no more uh, Amazon for a month. I'm not putting it out there, but I'm saying, did your spirit win when I said it? Mm. Amen, amen, amen. You get a little tightness in your chest. Like, mm. oh my God, I hope she don't. <laughs> well, because it's all about saving some money. Amen. Things are too expensive for us to be throwing away money. Right. Then when the time comes, you don't have it. You got to prepare a roof. You got a plumbing issue. Amen. You got car issues. You got to buy new tires. Well, all that money you did self-indulging and buying unnecessarily, you can't put on your feet. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. The next question was, are we fleshly sensitive or godly sensitive? Amen. Are we consistently fleshly offended or godly offended? Jesus. And that deals with carnality. Yes, amen. Amen. Yes. Yes, Mom. Somebody can't bring correction to you without you getting not tore up internally. Or being combative in your spirit, man. Jesus. Might not be verbally, but in your spirit, you telling the person off who you think you are. Wait, the boss of me. I know what you did so so man. I know your pain. You better check yourself. Amen. Do we truly hate the world and its things? Amen. Or do we really hate the things of God? Because you can't have it both ways. You either love the world. Jesus. Or you love God. You can't love God and have your hand out to iniquity. Amen. Yes. Yes. Trying to uh, straddle a fence. Yeah, you be done hurt yourself in the growing area. Keep playing. Amen. Yes, Lord. Trying to straddle both worlds. Yes, Lord. Really? Are we trying to straddle both worlds? Who do you think gonna win? Happy wing. Oh, with the, with the spirit of my mouth. Fast on. Oh, with the God. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you read, uh, you were in Isaiah 7. In the last, the last verse 21, he says, There is no. <laughs> Can somebody read that real quick? 21. 
2721. Isaiah 5721. 5721. Okay, got it. What does it say? 5721. Come on. 21 is very, it says, there is no peace, uh -huh. saith my God. Uh -huh. to the wicked. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, and I just began to start praying for myself. I said, Lord, are you? Ooh. I said, yep, that's me. You know what? I confessed it, repented, renounced it, mm -hmm. cast it out, and severed ties. That's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Man. Yes. Yeah, you find yourself in disobedience? Confess it. Repent. Yourself that spirit. Yeah. Renounce it. It's never tied. In the name of Amen. These things oh. ought not be named among us. Yeah. As being saints. Amen. Yes, Lord. You can't seem to be consistent in picking up your cross and denying yourself because your flesh speaks louder than your yeah. spirit, man. Yeah. You got to denounce it then. Amen. Stop making it easy for your flesh. Right. No. Oh. So there will be no challenge this week. <laughs> be at peace. <laughs> I was going to ask you. <laughs> Don't worry. Our TV time comes. Our church has a. 21 day fast come up in January. Fast. Nah. Yeah. That's going to be a challenge. Uh, and that's something that's funny you, you, funny you should mention that because um, I was thinking about incorporating a fast also at the end of the month. Um, whoever, and it's not nobody's obligated, but I just think we need to start conditioning ourselves, you know, um, and fasting and turning down that plate. And I, I'm going to say this because the Lord says, and he said this to me, and I had to describe it. He said, we make things too easy. Man. And I understand people are on medication, but you know what? When you sick, you don't take those meds that you won't. I'm going I'm going to put it out there. Because people say, oh, no, I'm on meds. You know, I got the, I got the whole set 12, 15. Now, come on now. Uh, uh, I will concentrate. concentrate. You know that word I'm talking about. Concentrate. Yeah, you know, no, that's, no, what, no. that's exactly what I was just about to say. That's, what, that's exactly what I was about to say. So I, I, I gotta eat. You know what? We get too many excuses. Amen. And I'm like, how many of us? Because I'm not good at taking my meds every day. I'm gonna be throw that out there. But do we really take our meds every day? Some of us do. Some of us don't. You know? Some of us do. Some of us don't. I'm, about I'm, not on, I'm not on meds, thank God. So praise the Lord, sweetheart. Hallelujah. I do. I Take do. Vitamins. I, 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 I'm going to challenge you. You know what I'm saying? Be wise. Be wise. It will go what have you to do. But we give our flesh too many excuses and too many out. <laughs> not to be fully obedient. Amen. That's yes, all. So, no challenge is spread in his heart. Lord have mercy. That's that is so funny. <laughs> I mean, and if, and if you can fast the whole day, right? Consecration, right? Consecration, eating, eating the meal a day, or uh, if you want or to break juice. It, yeah, that's what I was just saying. A non sweet yeah. cheese. Break it down into a juice, you know, uh, whatever, whatever you, you feel your system can handle uh, with your with your medication. You know, so you gotta use wisdom. Amen. That's what I said. Gotta use wisdom. There's a lot of games that the church can play, but if we ain't following Christ, it's never gonna lead us to any kind of consecration. Amen. Mm, amen. I'm the only one that heard it. I, don't know if I, did, I did not hear that. I'm going to be honest, sir. I did not hear it at all. I just now told him. I said I heard it, but I don't think anybody else heard it. <laughs> okay, I'll do this. Now say it. 
No, I said there's a lot of games that the church can play, but unless we're following Christ, we'll never come to a place of maturity in the things of God. Amen. 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 You know, we can we can talk all day about you know uh, cutting back on TV and and doing this and doing that, but I I played the church games and they they never uh, really have got me anywhere in the things of Christ. You know, when it comes to following after Christ, that's that's where we're going to come to the fullness and the maturity in in the things of God. Amen. You know, I, I'm sorry if if I you know offend anybody by what I'm saying, but uh, no, no. Amen. Praise amen. God. Sir. Amen. 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 Now take your heart. Right, that's why. What did God? What did Jesus say? Right, Jesus, God is a spirit. Yes, and they that worship Him is what? Spirit, spirit, and in truth. Right, for the Father, what? Seeketh. For the Father, what? Seeketh. Seeketh. For the Father, what? Seek it. Such. Right. For the Father, seek it. Such. Right. Such to worship him. Right. So um, he cares about our flesh. Right. But he cares about the spirit, man. Lord. Amen. He cares about the spirit, man. Amen. Right. Because you know, what, what's going to happen <laughs> when we die? What's going to happen with, you, with your spirit? The spirit goes. It goes. It leaves the body. That's right. You got no more covering. There's no more protection. That's it. That's a wrap. No more fleshly mitten. The fleshly protection. Right now, now you you're naked. Amen. Now we are naked. Now we're really Adam. Amen. And now the Father. You are seen by God. You're already it's seen. You. The real you. True self. Yeah. Yeah. Is revealed. That's, that's right, the take. The true self is revealed. Correct. Amen. So, yeah. 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 Glory to God. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, Uncle Joe, you want to go ahead and close this out? Prophet Jeremiah? Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pass the baton to the mystics. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are you and we love you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You gave us today. We surrender to you. We desire more. Father, you said to us the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. Father, you told me if I first, everything will fall into place in my life. So, Father, help us to seek you on it, whether it's big or small. Help us to delight in you more and more. Help us, dear God, to want to give God to eat of your flesh, to, to drink of your blood, that we can yeah. of Jesus. We thank you for what you accomplished on the cross of Calvary. We thank you that you're working in us, both to will and to do pleasure. God, we thank you that you're helping us and how people see our progression in you. God, we thank you that as we continue to follow you, we will be progressing. And so, Father, I ask in Jesus' name to encourage my brothers and sisters to Christ, that you would build us up in our most holy faith in you. Help us throughout the week what things that we need your help in. And Lord, that we would be encouraged and we would continue, Lord, to encourage ourselves in you. Being your word, praying, Studying your word, meditating on your word, fasting, and Lord, just keep a heart that is open and receptive to your voice. You said, My sheep, my voice, and none other than they follow. Father, I pray the blessings of God upon the family of God here to make them rich in you and to add no sorrow that will meet their every need, that our homes will be blessed, that the blood of Jesus would cover our doors, windows, cars, and everything that that pertains to us and our families in Jesus' name, and that you are strengthening us in our walk with you, in our faith in God, in our studying of your Father. Hide in our hearts as we need it, dear God, that we 
comes and cause it to come back to our mind. Amen. 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 everybody. Yes. I love you. Enjoyed you all. Love you all. Love you. 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 Love I'm going to turn it off.